Education is the mechanism to move a country forward and the people out of poverty. It has been proven worldwide that access to education enables a nation to develop faster and at a greater pace. Here in Guyana, education has been identified as one of the pillars for Guyana's development, its people and the economy. Since its accession to office, the coalition government has made significant investments towards ensuring that the nation's children are educated. Several programs have been initiated to ensure government's vision for equal access to education is achieved. In this week's edition of Guyana 411, we take a look at the education reform process in Guyana, programs in place to make education accessible and keep children in school, teacher training and education advancements, and to share with you the opportunities now offered to our Indigenous brothers and sisters of Guyana's hinterland. So join me, Renette LaFleur, in this Gina program, Guyana 411. Stay tuned. Strengthening the education system in Guyana has been on government's agenda ever since taking office in May 2015. The administration has taken a number of steps geared towards restructuring the education system with the aim of creating well-rounded individuals. We now take a look at some of these initiatives and how it contributes to the education reform process. One of the major steps taken by government to strengthen the education system is the launch of a Commission of Inquiry. Technical facilitator to the Minister of Education, Vincent Alexander, explains what the COI is about. If one listened to the Minister's presentation in Parliament, he indicated that the Ministry was still in what he referred to as the diagnostic phase of the new regime. That is still making a determination of what exactly needs to be fixed and how exactly it will be fixed. I think the COI fits into that scenario because the COI is a mechanism which is being used to interact with the stakeholders for them to help in the process of identifying what they consider to be the problems, the deficiencies, the shortfalls, and also to indicate what they think could be solutions. The COI will be taken to all 10 administrative regions in Guyana for consultations to have all wrong contributions. There's no way that one size or one pair of shoes can fit everybody. Therefore, if you are going to think about equality and equity and access and so on, you've got to hear from the people. You've got to hear from the people because each region will have its peculiarities. So to get back to your original question, we are targeting, so to speak, persons in the regions too, not just in Georgetown. We are also targeting organizations because organizations also impact the education sector and impact what happens in education. Thus, for example, the private sector commission, the Guyana Teachers Union, the Teaching Service Commission, you name it. We want to hear from them because people benefit or are affected by what the education sector puts out. Additionally, reviewing the school curriculum is also important towards strengthening the education system. According to the Minister of Education, Dr. Rupert Rupnarain, Guyana's education curriculum dates back to the 1970s. A modernized system will open new avenues for Guyanese to not just excel locally and regionally, but also to allow for students to be on the same level as international students. The review of the education system is expected to see the inclusion of music, arts and culture and sports. Minister Rupnarain says that the review should be completed before the end of the year. Well, I would like to ensure that we get the, the, the curriculum review completed and the reforms that are needed within it within this year. I can't tell you what month of this year, but I'm, you know, we, we're at work on it. 
and I'm hoping that by the end of this year we would be in a position to implement um, you know, new proposals in relation to the curriculum. Last year, the Minister of Education initiated a music program for school teachers. The program was aimed at training and maintaining a cadre of primary school teachers in music education to resuscitate and support music in primary schools. That, that is part of a program to ensure that our teachers are taught the theory related to music so that we can have our children in school doing music. Um, there is also the intention to integrate things like the literary arts, drama, and music bigger than just um, singing and that type of thing, but still pan music and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of plans to have a lot of initiatives integrated into the current curriculum. We have to be careful not to overburden that, and so we've taken that step to ensure that we tailor it to meet the needs of our students while not overloading them at the same time. Government is also working towards the reintegration of sports in the school curriculum as a timetabled subject. Minister within the Ministry of Education, Nicolette Henry, says the process is a timely one. Getting sports rolled out in school requires a number of steps. One of the steps is to ensure that the teachers and coaches are so trained and equipped to roll it out. And therefore, that would involve, of course, recruitment, training, and, and placing of the technical persons, whether they're coaches, whether they're teachers. It also involved, to a great extent, collaboration between the Department of Sport and mainstream education. As you know, prior to 2015, Youth Sport and Culture was a standalone ministry, separate from education. Now the two are integrated. And so as we integrate the two um, areas, that in itself is one of the measures to ensure that there is a seamless networking and transition of sport into schools. Um, it, it's much more long term as, as against a very short term um, approach and mechanism. Teachers play an important role in the lives of students. If we are to have well-rounded students, there must be well-trained teachers who are capable of producing such students. Government continues to train hundreds of teachers at the Cyril Potter College of Education and the University of Guyana. This feature outlines the objective of the teacher training programs as it fits in the education reform model. Last year, 506 teachers graduated from the Cyril Potter College of Education and another batch will be graduating before the year ends. However, merely graduating educators or having a certificate in education does not mean a teacher is ready for the classroom. Recognizing this, government will be training teachers in the area of counseling. This will address the challenges faced with students displaying recalcitrant behavior in the classroom. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan explains. Equipping our teachers in classrooms to ensure more effective subject delivery continues to be a priority. In an attempt to address the increasing rate of psychosocial problems in our schools, teachers will be trained with the requisite competencies and techniques to lend support to our school welfare officers. Information and Communications Technology, ICT, is taking the world by storm. Almost every day is technology driven which includes teaching. President David Granger has committed to equipping every teacher who enters the Cyril Potter College of Education, CPCE, with a laptop computer under the One Laptop Per Teacher Initiative, a promise made by His Excellency even before he became President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. The promise was made before the 2011 general and regional elections. And I said that Guyana was being left behind in information technology and in communication. And I said that we should give every single teacher a laptop before when that teacher goes into Cyril Potter College of Education. One laptop per teacher is what I said. Well, I had to wait to become president, but having become president now, I'm making my first one laptop to one teacher. And that's why I'm here.
but I hope that in, in weeks to come, when we have another supply of laptops, every single teacher going into the Shell Potter College of Education will be given a laptop on day one to enable him or her to do her work. We can't expect to have you entering the information age into the communication age if your teachers themselves don't have the means to instruct you. The Guyana Teachers Union and the Ministry of Education both agree that teachers need to be empowered and their role in nation building acknowledged. This has sparked discussions for all teachers to be eligible for duty-free concessions and vehicles. Additionally, President of the Guyana Teachers Union, Mark Light, says that he hopes that the agreement will reduce the length of service required for Whitley Council leave from four years to three. Light also hopes that the agreement will cater for prompt payments of leave allowance for teachers. Government's holistic approach to education represents a new journey for students, teachers, and parents and guardians. There is an emphasis on a broad educational slant that addresses the values, attitudes, and skills which will serve the students well and offer teachers a framework within which to work. It also seeks to develop students actively beyond academic excellence. Studies have found that there is a 20% higher school dropout rate in the Caribbean when compared to Latin America. School dropouts have been linked to a number of reasons, mainly poverty. Government noticing the trend has since implemented a number of initiatives which have resulted in a significant reduction in the number of school dropouts and improved attendance. Let's look at some of the programs aimed at keeping children in school. President David Granger's 5Bs initiative is his lead effort to ensure every child is equipped to attend school. The 5Bs program, books, breakfast, buses, bicycles and boats, targets all 10 administrative regions in Guyana, but more particularly hinterland communities. President Granger, at the handing over of two buses in Region 5, outlines why he thought it important to craft such an initiative. On the East Bank, I met a teacher who was paying transport for one student who she felt was very brilliant and needed to be given the opportunity to travel from Suez Lake to Houston to go to school. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are to produce a generation of leaders to take control of this beautiful country, we cannot accept a situation in which every single month, 400 children are dropping out of school. And that is what is happening in Guyana. Every month, 400 children drop out of school, and most of them drop out because their parents cannot afford to keep them in school. They can't afford the transportation. And that is why we are here this afternoon in Fort Wellington. Because the purpose of our administration is to solve problems. We know who caused the problems. We will solve the problems. We want to make sure that every child can go to school. Because education is going to unlock not only that child's career, not only the future of this region, but the entire country. This initiative has already begun to bear fruit. To date, 10 buses, 9 boats and hundreds of bicycles have been donated to children and communities, all aimed at reducing inequalities in education, to ensure that every child has access. Recently, President Granger commissioned a 42-seater bus to the village of Marikabai, situated up the Maikoni River in the Mahaika Werbis region. Donna Chapman, Deputy Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Education, explains how the distribution of a boat in Region 10 is already having a positive impact. Region 10 has actually said that they have a success story because um, they have a boat bringing people all the way past West Otuka and more children are attending school. But they recognize that they were coming so early that they had no breakfast. So the Department of Education actually introduced a breakfast program for those children. Getting to school is one part, but being able to focus when in the classroom is another issue. Studies have shown that when a child is hungry, he or she cannot be very receptive in the classroom, 
which leads to poor concentration and understanding of what is being taught. Minister of Education Dr. Rupert Rupnarayan says that he is looking at having the Hot Meal program expanded. Uh, I believe the Hot Meals program is one of the, one of the programs um, you know, to which we are most attached. You know, we, your hungry children can't learn. And we are very strong on um, doing everything we can to get that Hot Meal program going. The Hot Meal program is, is beneficial not only to the students who, who benefit from it, but also the farmers who are going to, in fact, you know, step up their own work to produce, you know, for the kitchens and that kind of thing. So my, my hope is that the hot meal program is going to be expanded, is going to be refined, that we're going to, you know, iron out whatever kinks there are in the system and get that going. Because um, I, I do believe we want to ensure that children, um, when they sit in the classroom, that they are really receptive to what they're receiving and, and uh, you know children are not going to be very receptive if they're hungry. To further enhance attendance and curb school dropout in Guyana, the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, have commissioned a study into out-of-school children. The main objective of this collaboration is to gather baseline data while building capacity to achieve the agreements of the ministry and the key stakeholders. The country is challenged by limited data on the causes of dropout and out-of-school children at both the national and sub-regional levels. This study this morning will set out to correct these issues and bottlenecks caused by the limited data on out-of-school children, as well as accelerate efforts towards improving the quality and consistency of reliable data collected through the regional administration. As a response and in an attempt to work towards achieving equitable inclusive education, the Ministry of Education's first action is to commission systemic, a systematic research on out-of-school children. For me, out-of-school children reach closer home in my communities, in churches, when we have children that are from single parent families. We have working children. We have children with disabilities. We have children working on the streets and children in rural and remote areas. We have evidence, it's proved all around that children, as Ms. Chapman would have said, they go to school on a short-term basis. On Fridays, they may not go. We would have indulged in, in specific families and targeted homes where we give extra support to ensure children go to school. But sometimes the parents not there to comb the hair, to dress that child, to send that child to school. We can do so much, but we would admonish that all stakeholders get on board in this regard. Minister Ropnarain is calling for the establishment of a Parent Teachers Association Secretariat. The minister advocates the need for both parents and teachers to play a significant role in their children's lives. Minister Rupnarayan says that it would also be help to curb school dropouts. Children who drop out of school, I believe this really has to do with a failing on the part of the, of the teachers. It's a failing on the part of parents. And, you know, and that's one of the reasons I believe that the, the strengthening the PTAs in all of the schools is very important to me. Because, you know, the, the more that we can strengthen the partnership between parents and teachers, to let them understand this is a joint problem and it has, we have to find joint solutions. Parents and teachers have to be working literally in a very active collaboration to get things going. And my own, my own wish is that we are going to strengthen all of the PTAs in the schools and establish a PTA secretariat here at the ministry. At the moment, you know, we have a school board secretariat. I want us to have a, PTA Secretariat as well as a Counseling Secretariat so that we can deal with the issue of counseling in a systematic and, and, and professional way 
and as far as the PTAs is concerned. And, you know, I, I believe that the more involved you can get the parents in what you're trying to do in the schools, the better, better for everyone, the better for the children. In the end, that's, that's, our, that's our responsibility. Reintegrating teenage mothers into the school system is another major move by government to keep children in schools. Minister Rupnarain says too many teens get pregnant, drop out of school and end up never returning. The minister says that this is an issue that will soon be addressed. We need to get these children back in school. Um, you know, teenage, teenage parents, they're faced with sufficient challenges. And um, I believe that to the extent that they are you know, about to be, about to be mothers, um, we want to ensure that they are as equipped as they possibly can be to be the kind of mothers that they need to be. And I think that our, you know, uh, that education in school really has to, I think, identify these particular needs of this group of people and uh, lay great stress on, on working with them to ensure that they get the kind of support that they need for these challenges that they're going to face. A lot of these young children um, who are, you know, producing, producing children um, need a lot, of, uh, a lot of guidance and a lot of help. And my own feeling is that that is something that we have to pay attention to in, in the schools as well. Additional efforts by the government to help keep children in school while at the same time ease the burden of parents is through the school uniform voucher program. During the reading of the 2016 National Budget, Finance Minister Winston Jordan announced that there would be an increase from $1,500 to $2,000. The ministry is currently distributing approximately 150,000 uniform vouchers to parents and guardians of children attending public schools in regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, Bartica and Georgetown. The remoteness of the hinterland areas in Guyana has seen access to quality education being a struggle for students who reside there. Government recognizing this has placed a lot of emphasis on bridging the gap between education on the coastland and the hinterland. We now take a look at the opportunities offered to Guyana's indigenous youths in accessing education in the hinterland. The first step in bridging this gap is ensuring that students are able to attend school. A number of hinterland villages have benefited from the distribution of boats and bicycles under the President's 5 Bs program. In the 2016 national budget, the sum of $1.9 billion was allocated for the national school feeding program. According to Finance Minister Winston Jordan, the monies will allow for an additional 7,000 students in the hinterland to receive hot meals. In addition, students in the hinterland benefit from uniform materials provided by the government. Further, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs has in place the Hinterland Scholarship Program. The program provides academic opportunities at both the secondary and tertiary levels and promotes the integration of Hinterland students into the wider Guyanese society. It also affords them the opportunity to benefit from quality secondary and technical education not accessible in their Hinterland communities. This program provides students with a monthly stipend, school necessities, accommodation and meals. Recently, 85 students graduated from the Hinterland Scholarship Program. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, told graduates that it is their right to access education. Education is not a privilege. It is a right. The enjoyment of which helps in a big way to prepare you for the role you must play in nation building. Remain focused on your chosen career path. Employ all of your energies in things positive. Be positive always, as positive things will follow. You are young, bright citizens of Guyana. The world is at your feet. What you do from here on is simply a matter of choice. The Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs continues to push for quality education for students in the hinterland. 
Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garrido Lowe, explains that many students in the hinterland are unable to attend the University of Guyana due to a number of factors. However, the ministry is working to curb some of the issues. It's region 9, so there are also lots of qualified people there. But what, what hinders them, what obstacles they suffer, is finance. Simple finance. I mean, it, it's not simple really. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. That's true. But they want to come to the University of Guyana. One, where will they stay? Two, how will they get money every day, you know, to feed themselves? If they have to pay their rent and so on. So it's a it's an uphill battle for them to get to higher education. That is why um, right now um, we're looking for a consultant to design another dormitory. And that dormitory will be for GTI students and UG students. We haven't decided on what structure the system will take yet, but at least the building will go up and they know that they will have somewhere to stay. You know when you tell them this, parents smile yes. and the youth smile because there is something now to work for. Because many of them, they have nine, eight, seven, ten subjects. Wow. But nobody used to, uh, hardly then, ask them uh, to come out and go somewhere to the UG or so. An information communication technology ICT needs assessment project is on the way in hinterland and rural communities in Guyana following a U.S. $524,000 contract which was signed among the government of Guyana, Germany-based Daticom Consultancy, and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. The introduction of ICT in the hinterland is part of government's effort to bridge the education gap between the hinterland and the coast. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes explains. This project has a very unique and specific target audience, and that is the provision of ICT access to hinterland, poor, and remote communities. Most of us Guyanese know that for many, many years, what happens on the coast and what happens in our hinterland regions vary vastly. And in fact, when you look at uh, sectors such as education, e-commerce, commerce development, the, our hinterland and remote communities have really um, not been able to be on par. Additionally, government has not forgotten those youths and young adults in the hinterland. Since October of 2015, government had introduced the Hinterland Employment Youth Services Program. Most of them um, between the ages of 16 to 35 who would have been school dropouts, you know, um, young ladies who um, got pregnant and had to drop out, young fathers who also left school and went, um, you know, in search of money to buy milk for baby and things like that. And you had uh, also youngsters that... Um, the, the program then caters for youngsters that, let's say, wrote CXE, but didn't do well at all. They failed all their subjects. So this is a, a second chance for youths, young adults, to um, develop themselves and to live a good life. The program allows for students to learn a trade in carpentry, masonry, and agriculture, and garment construction mechanic, most recently ecotourism, among other disciplines. Minister Lowe tells us more. Within the Hayes program has an ecotourism and hospitality component, which will give youths the basic. And added to that, they will get business training. But we want to, we really want to let the indigenous people well, they understand that they live, especially in Region 8, Region 9, Region 7. They live among beauty. But um, they, can't, they can't wear the mountain, they can't eat the mountain, 
and so on. So, as an as a life there, it it isn't it isn't meant much to them. So we want to let them understand and let them see it from an ecotourism angle, because I feel that uh, ecotourism and agriculture that is where the hinterland will be able to to garner a really strong economy. So revenue for the people, three meals a day on, on the table, clothing, leisure money, travel money and so on, you know. The Hayes program targets 112 indigenous communities in all 10 regions benefiting 2,000 youths. Minister Ali Cock has taken the initiative in the indigenous communities to find We hope that this week's program has been informative and educational and you are now in a better position to understand the importance of education and the need for your children to take full advantage of the opportunities offered to access education at the highest level. Jean is pleased to encourage reading as much as possible to ensure you are kept abreast of current affairs. We have come to an end of this week's edition of Guyana 411. I am Renette LaFleur, encouraging you to visit our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook to be updated on all government's plans, programs, and policies aimed at making your lives better. Thank you for watching. Have a great week ahead.